Please, Ritesh, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thanks for your time. Ritesh tracks uh, the steel metal sector and he also looks at the cement space. Uh, let's start with the cement space, which has seen some activity, some buoyancy uh, in the recent, what, uh, two fortnights or so. Uh, Ritesh, what's your overall uh, construct as far as cement stocks go uh, uh, in, in India and how would you look at it? Uh, the, stu uh, the cement stocks have definitely run up, uh, but we continue to remain quite positive on the entire space. Mm. Uh, we do a lot of channel checks. Uh, we clearly believe that infra demand is coming through, uh, be it roads, uh, irrigation or bridges. Uh, so that, that part of the story is definitely kicking. Mm. Uh, if even one looks at uh, the residential launches data on the construction side, uh, the preliminary data points that we have, uh, again, it's, it's quite encouraging. Uh, again, we are quite hopeful and uh, the recent forecast from SkyMet, it's, it's something that we are looking at uh, closely. Mm -hmm. So if uh, monsoons are uh, on schedule uh, and, and the SkyMet forecast have been uh, pretty nice uh, for this year. Mm -hmm. So if that part of the story comes through, basically we will see 40% of rural income which is aggregate derived. Mm -hmm. uh, the demand from that part of the story kicked through, again helping the demand. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, bottom up, clearly, uh, we see definitely things moving on the infra side. We are hopeful on monsoons. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if one looks at uh, the top down several variables, be it uh, electricity, uh, consumption, or auto sales, uh, uh, it's, it's again pointing in the, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we do agree that uh, uh, the cement stocks have moved up, but we, we definitely see uh, more value in the space. Yeah. You know, the one concrete area where uh, for months now we've seen uh, activity, which is ordering activity, uh, is roads, right? That's right. But roads is a very small percentage of this overall cement consumption, right? It's about 10%, 10-12% or so. That's right. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, uh, I mean, housing, right, is, is one of the biggest. Core sector projects are another big consumer of cement. These are areas where we've not seen much activity at all. I mean, I don't know uh, how we can track the housing construction activity, I don't know if there are any, any indicators, but core sector projects, there has been nothing for the last couple of years. Right. Uh, so, to answer your first question first, uh, say when you point towards roads or say if one has to draw parallels, so say something like the dedicated freight corridor project on the western and the eastern side, mm. uh, if one looks at the direct consumption from this very project, it's nearly four, four and a half million tons. It's, mm. it's not a quick game changer. Mm. But uh, one needs to look at the peripheral development which comes along with roads or such massive infra projects. Mm. So, land rates usually appre appreciate you have a lot of construction activity which comes along with such projects. Mm. So that, that part of the story is uh, definitely ticking. Mm. Uh, second part of the story, uh, as far as construction is concerned, yes, it's, it's a major chunk, nearly 60% of India's cement demand, uh, of which nearly 40% will be rural. Uh, we don't get housing stats in India, unlike West. Mm. Uh, but uh, the way to look at us, uh, if, you, if you look at the priority sector lending data from RBI, uh, on a monthly basis, th that, that part of the story is definitely uh, moving up uh, in small bits. Uh, if this trend sustains, it's definitely going to do good for the sector. Uh, besides this, uh, if one looks at in the Cushman and Wakefield data on the residential launches, uh, if one looks at for the Q4 data on a sequential basis, it's up uh, 29%. And specifically over here, you see affordable housing as a segment, which is definitely uh, gaining steam. Uh, so, uh, it, is, it is definitely showing, showing green, sh green shoots and uh, we were quite hopeful uh, the space will uh, work in, in the favor. The, the, uh, I mean, you know, the other data point which I don't know is the right one to look at is the growth that uh, all these housing finance companies are showing, right? right. I mean, typically the loan size is at 8 to about 12 odd lakh rupees or so. That's right. Uh, so, they've been doing very, very well. Exactly. So that's that's another variable that you can also look at. Mm. Uh, so RBA lending, uh, priority sector lending, it's for a ticket size less than 20 lakhs. Mm. So again, we as we don't get exact housing stats data, that's an alternate way we we'll look at mm. uh, from a top-down point of view. Mm. So yeah. For construction, especially rural construction, even urban construction, you said out of the construction-led cement consumption demand, 60% uh, is rural, right? 60% uh, is total, 40% uh, is rural, 20% is urban. Uh, okay, 40% of the construction demand is rural. Yeah, sorry. Uh, how significant are, are, are monsoon rains, I mean, essentially? Uh, 
right. as, a, as a driver? So if you look at it on a standalone basis, uh, we did this math long back. We did regression uh, on uh, regional monsoon, monsoon patterns against uh, mm. the regional cement uh, demand growth rates. Mm. You don't find a definite high degree of correlation for uh, select region, it, it, you can't extrapolate it uh, for the country as a whole. Mm. But uh, we did, again, a lot of channel checks. Uh, one needs to appreciate uh, that if one breaks up the rural income pie, you have 40% which is agri-derived. Mm. The balance 60% which is non-agri. Mm. Uh, you have typically a member or two from a family uh, which is uh, usually employed in tier one or tier two uh, city mm. uh, in the metros. Mm. So if uh, the urban construction uh, goes well. Uh, these people who are working, the migrants who are working in the cities, mm. they typically repatriate money back home. And uh, that's also a main lever uh, when they take any decision making on uh, incremental, uh, be it housing or be it auto. Mm. So uh, we have seen housing starts uh, positive on the urban side. <laughs> And 40% of the rural uh, demand, uh, rural income, which is agri, uh, if, if monsoon takes, that, that part of the story is also on. So mm -hmm. we are quite hopeful, uh, basically, for the demand to come through uh, from a rural side. It's an interesting statistic. You're saying 40% of the construction demand uh, for cement is uh, agri-led, right? 40% uh, of the rural income uh -huh. uh, is uh, non-agri-derived. 40% uh -huh. of the rural income is non-agri, okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and, the, and the balance is agree. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, so the majority is <coughs> agri-led still, That's right? right. Right. But a significant large portion is uh, non-agri, non non-farm-led, right? That's right. Okay, all right. So uh, one can't look so at it on. So for cement a, demand, is it a good thing or a bad thing in relation to the monsoon? It's 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 a good thing. If mm. monsoons works, definitely you have an incremental positive delta which comes on. Mm. Uh, but what we are hinting over here is monsoons. It's not the only driver. Yeah. You also need to look at uh, how infra steps in, how yeah. uh, you have uh, residential starts in both uh, urban mm. cities tier one as well as tier two. Mm. And the, the other, other way, way to look at it is that monsoon then is not also a complete. Uh, uh, I mean, savior, so as to speak, right? That's that's. I exactly mean, the commonly right. held assumption out there would be that well, uh, farm incomes and uh, agri incomes are the big driver. That's for that's, overall. That's that's exactly what yeah. we are hinting to. So, uh, monsoons is not the only thing. There are other variables also. Yeah. Uh, wherein we are seeing some green shoots actually, uh, which will help the sector incrementally. Okay. All right. Now, uh, how how do you break up cement stocks in terms of uh, your coverage? Because it's a, th th these are regional plays, right? right. Uh, so you can't move. Cement over long distances is right. costly to do so. so. How do you look at it? Uh, and, so, yeah. uh, so logistics is nearly 25% uh, of the cost structure, uh, basically. So it's something which is uh, quite important. Yeah. So the preference that we have uh, on the regions is we, we prefer central region first, mm. uh, followed by uh, north, and then east, and then south. Mm. Uh, what we believe is the value growth incrementally uh, has to be a function of volume growth. Uh, that is something which is very important. Uh, so far, the price increases that you have seen in South, uh, I'm talking about last two to three years, not about the recent price declines. Uh, it is more on back of supply discipline. Now, if you're talking about 300 rupees per bag, uh, what is the incremental vol value growth that we are looking at? Mm. Uh, if even if the volume growth comes through, come, comes through, so mm. you don't have much scope over here. Mm. Uh, unlike this, if you look at say some, something in North or in East, wherein the current pricing is more a function of demand and supply, mm. and where we, wherein we are quite hopeful on the demand side, uh, we definitely think there will be value growth mm. uh, on back of volume growth. So fundamentally, we are uh, on the on the demand supply angle, we are more comfortable. Uh, uh, and we have most of our mid-cap buys, which uh, are uh, north-based proxy, mm. uh, which is JK Lakshmi uh, and JK Cement. Yeah. Uh, no, so you're saying that in, uh, down south, demand supply is evenly balanced and uh, pricing discipline is kind of held on, uh, which has helped. It is, it is more of calibrated supply, <coughs> which is helping uh, the prices remain where they are. Okay, okay. So, Incrementally. And that was also, I'm assuming, something to do, got to do with the uh, better financial health of companies, right? Uh, exactly. So uh, the other way to look at is, uh, if you look at the interest coverage spreads mm. uh, of the companies in South, mm. you have massive leverage in South-based companies. Mm. Now, if the companies have to operate uh, a, a okay. larger guy or a smaller guy, it will be in the best interest of both the mm. companies mm. to actually push uh, prices over volumes. Mm. So this is pure economics bottom-up, uh, which is which is clearly at play. And one can say it's, it's a price signaling, which is working uh, pretty well so far. So, okay. But there is an element of hope involved over here. So recently, I've seen price prices decline in South because a few smaller guys actually started pumping in more volumes. Mm. So that is the uncertainty that you live with uh, if you have exposure to South-based. The story interest. in the North basically is one of uh, demand 
uh, you forecast demand to pick up and then I mean that leads to better volume and pricing as well. Exactly. That's the story. That's right. Not by the way is uh, a bulk of the overall country's demand, right? And that's that's right. Sixty uh, percent. Uh, so uh, historically, if you look at uh, South, has been a major chunk, mm. but uh, currently South you are seeing operating at around 47, 48 percent utilization levels mm. uh, based on our estimates. Mm. So currently, Northwest it's it's quite important, and um, that's the region where we have more visibility on infra projects uh, as well as things actually moving on the affordable housing segment. Yeah. What are your app top bets, I mean, in cement? Uh, for our viewers, I mean, absolute returns is what matters, not relative. Right. Where, where do you see absolute upsides? All right. Uh, Meaningful upsides, yes. Okay. So, uh, in, the, in the large cap space, we have uh, Ultratech. Again, it is something which has run up, uh, but we published a note today morning where, mm. we, where we have increased the target price. Mm. We still see upside of around uh, 15 to 20%. Mm. Uh, other, other stock that we like in the large cap space is uh, Shri Cement. Uh, uh, for reasons uh, well known uh, because uh, of the strength what they have on the cost side mm. uh, incrementally what we have identified is they have a potential capability to increase a capacity from 25 to 50 million tons mm. of which the company has only announced 10 million tons so far so volume growth will continue in the story and they have cost on their, on their side so you'll have a compounding uh, story in Sri cement mm. Uh, in the mid-cap space, we like JK Lakshmi, JK Cement, and Prism Cement. Uh, again, it, it are more proxies towards uh, north and center cluster. <coughs> Prism Cement as well, right? That's right. <coughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, you know, I, it, so that is cement uh, for our viewers. Ritesh, you also cover steel. There's this deal with Tata Steel which has happened. Uh, before we hit air, you were telling me uh, something about goodwill impairment. Right. Uh, which has not been discussed. Uh, right. Would you want to talk about that? Right. Uh, so if you look at uh, Tata Steel European operations, there has been a continuous cash burn, uh, I think, for the last n number of years. Mm. Uh, the way in which they've gone about funding the European operations is by raising debt at the Singapore subsidiary. Mm. Now, the management has been quite opaque when it comes to disclosures on the debt covenants. So what I was hinting to is... Uh, even if the entire transactions goes through, so we are only talking about Scanthrop right now. So even if Port Talbot is uh, taken off the plate, uh, then there will be goodwill impairment which will come through. So effectively, uh, we are talking about book value effectively reducing from 285, 290 rupees mm -hmm. to around 145 rupees. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to covenants, uh, definitely there will be uh, some pressure on net debt to equity. Uh, but it, it is something that uh, we expect the management to be more vocal about incrementally. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, the management would have thought about it uh, given the transaction has gone through. Mm -hmm. But uh, there will be definitely some pressure on the covenant side, which uh, I think it, it hasn't been uh, spoken much about. You're saying book value after the goodwill hit, according to your calculations, can co fall to about 145 rupees That's a share. That's right. Okay. I don't, I've not seen that uh, mentioned uh, often in research reports, etc. Exactly. So mm. basically, end, 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 for end Q2 uh, uh, mm. fiscal year, mm. uh, they did report around 14,400 crores of goodwill. Mm. And uh, post that, you have uh, this transactions, if it, if it actually plays out, mm. uh, goodwill also will have to be impacted. So mm. that's, that's, that math needs to be looked mm. at. Fair enough. Aritesh, out of time. It's a pleasure talking to you here on the show. Thanks very much. Uh, do come back soon enough. Thank Lots you. more to talk Thanks. about in this space. Appreciate your time.